With us this morning, we have Wayne Dunlap, the Executive Director with New Mexico Donor Services. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Wayne, thank you so much for joining us this morning. For our viewers at home who have not heard about New Mexico Donor Services, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, we are the federally designated uh, uh, organ procurement organization that serves donor families and recipients. We are the bridge uh, from the donor family to the recipient of that beautiful gift. Tell me about that beautiful gift and how many lives have been saved um, just in New Mexico worldwide and how many people are still on that list waiting for a transplant? <laughs> So currently there's about 110,000 people on the waiting list uh, nationally and about 700 New Mexicans. Um, in July, we did have a, a record month despite the, the pandemic and we're able to have 13 heroes um, um, save 47 lives. Wow. That is a remarkable number, especially for the month of, uh, month of July. Um, as we were talking before our interview today, um, the pandemic has really taken its toll on donor services. Tell me about that. Um, well, I think in the beginning, it's, it's, it's put pressures on the hospital, absolutely, as we figure out how to understand and, and serve our community. Um, um, and a lot of what the pressures have been on has been on the donor families. You know, there's been limited visitation of, of, of their loved ones. And, and you can only imagine on the worst day of, of their life, losing a loved one in, in the midst of a pandemic, uh, uh, continuing to to think about other people and and wanting to do to do good. Let's talk about that. I know during the pandemic, as I mentioned, things have been a little bit more difficult. Um, obviously, we know that because of COVID, a lot of families can't go into hospitals. This time around, you guys saw an honor walk mm -hmm. like no other before. Tell me about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you know, we, we had a very special donor, a, a pediatric donor, Thomas, a 13-year-old, and, and first and foremost, those are the most difficult. No child should go before their parents, and, and as the strong sense of community that we do have, we, we want to reach out to those families and support, and there was a limited honor walk, but the rest of this family's community wanted to honor him and this family. And so what this community did was organized a balloon release outside the hospital, and right before this little hero went to the OR to save three lives, they were able to do a balloon release and see the family from the window of the, of the sky bridge and, and, and honor him. And it, was, it was truly special. When you saw that, what was your first, uh, I don't know, reaction? Um, just a, a sense of, of overwhelming emotion? Yeah, I mean, you know, think of it. You know, um, children aren't supposed to, to, to die. They're not. Um, and, and any parent, any, anybody, you know, heart goes out to them and, and not to be able to go and, and support them is, is, is difficult as well too. So to just to see this sense of community and people coming together and, and, and rallying behind this family to, to help them and, and honor this little hero, um, as he does, gives this ultimate gift. It's, it's just amazing during the pandemic you know, and all the adversity and ugliness that we see going on, that there are these acts of human kindness. It's, it's amazing. It, it makes me proud to be New Mexican. Now, Wayne, you mentioned, obviously, Thomas is a hero, and so many mm. other New Mexicans have been heroes, um, both living and those that have passed on. For some of our viewers who are thinking, how can I make an impact today as a living donor? How can they do so? Well, you know, ask if, if there is somebody that you know that needs a kidney, you can, you can sign up and, and donate, um, ask them, they, they can connect you with their transplant program, do a workup, but yeah, there is absolutely living donation um, that happens frequently and, and is safe and, and, and that's a remarkable way to help as well too. In addition to that, I know that we've all been asked this question when we're getting our driver's license. And, and sometimes we, we think about it. Should we be a donor? Should we not? I know there's a, some of our viewers have religious reasons why they're not donors. Um, for those who, who don't have a specific reason as to why not, why should they? Um, again, it's, it's truly a miracle to become an organ donor. And it might surprise you that last year we only had 62 organ donors. So... You know, just the, the simple act of registering to be an organ donor um, gives those that are waiting hope. And so um, uh, what reservations might be out there? You know, it's surprising. It might surprise you that 80% of, of the United States supports donation. And, and, and in New Mexico, we have one of the highest donor registries. We already 
uh, sign up at a very high rate. Um, and I think it's because we do have that sense of community and that, that sense of, of, of giving and support. I know before we, we wrap up our interview that you wanted to thank uh, the, the numerous health workers that have really helped uh, through this pandemic to make donor services continue. Yeah, to, to all the healthcare providers and the first responders out there, it is truly amazing to work with you as our partners to see the, the added pressures and, and, and stuff that you're going through in the hospital. And despite that, you're continuing to support these families and, and, and take care of these loved ones. And so for those families that have limited visitation, know that when we're there, we, we're seeing amazing care and, and, and amazing things happen in these hospitals. So thank you for all your efforts. Wayne? We're going to have information on how uh, some of our viewers can, can register to be a donor. You can do it today. I want to thank you so much for joining us, though. Yeah. Thank you.